Hey, hey, dear beloveds. I am so delighted to be joining you here on this very cool wintry Melbourne Friday. I don't know where it is, what what kind of weather it is in your part of the world, but it sort of feels appropriate for going into winter rather than summer. But I have bundled myself up and I am excited to get to hang out with you and really to talk about one of my favourite topics and that's looking at the intersectional interplay of fear and intuition which is not necessarily something that we would associate with intuition fear and intuition aren't necessarily things that you think about if I want to increase my intuition do I do I meet my fear in a normal kind of conversation around intuition probably that is not what you're gonna hear but this is where we come in and you know the Institute's mission is to change the conversation about intuition because in fact what we've so often done in the name of increasing our intuition is simply about pursuing the trinkets and superstitions, some kind of external magic potion that's going to give us what we need in order to flourish. Hello dear Laura. So I want to spend some time with you just talking through the ways in which we can increase our intuition and the science of intuition and, and really when we understand how intuition works, then we begin to understand why fear is so crucial to increasing our intuitive capacity. And that to me is a game changer and it's absolutely not like anything anybody else is talking about in regards to intuition because everything that we're taught about intuition is this idea of the pursuit of something outside of ourselves, even our intuition. So we're even given the false idea that intuition is accessing some special magic place or box or something out there in the cosmos that has the answers to our life and we have to figure out how to get the, the, the privileged access and some people have the gift and some people don't and it's all baloney because the truth of it is, is where we're going is within. So here we're starting to talk to the idea of how fear and intuition meet. But let's just break it down a little bit because I want to explain a little bit about what intuition actually is in the way that I teach it and the way that I talk about it. So the Institute is specialist or specializes in teaching non-local intuition. There are biological forms of intuition which we call gut instinct, which are biology based and they function because of what we are. So we have, we are electromagnetic beings who produce, produce a field and that field is in constant communion with all the fields of everything around us because everything produces a field, even inanimate objects. So we're picking up information through our biology as well as through our if you like forgotten memories of what we've lived. So those two forms of intuition are biological, they are inborn, they're not magical or special, they're just part of our toolkit. And yet because we're never taught about them or we're never trained in them or we're never given encouragement to, to recognize them, in fact, we're oft, we often treat them as though they're scary and suspicious, we haven't pursued um, activating them and they are simply survival forms of intuition. They really are just how life protects life, how we go about being in the world and we're using them all of the time even when we're not conscious of it and this is the real thing about it, the tragedy I guess of it is that if we were taught how to use them we could absolutely flourish so much more powerfully in our day to day. And they're important forms of intuition, but the form of intuition that I believe is really going to change the world or what will help bring in the new paradigm, which we are desperately in need of, and where really we go beyond um, really looking at the status quo, we begin to tap into a power that is greater than this human biological finite and limited self. So whilst we're working with our purely biological intuitions, we're limited to a kind of Newtonian idea of time and space. When we start working with our non-local intuition, we are literally going quantum. And here we're stepping outside of the known universe, the known Newtonian laws, and we're moving into a quantum paradigm in which we are able to access our higher consciousness, if you like, we can call it our highest consciousness, or the consciousness of the infinite one mind, or the consciousness of, of the quantum field. Now this is simply science. Quantum physics has been telling us for over 100 years that we are energy first, physical second. 
And that energy is not m constrained by these Newtonian laws of physics in the way that we believe to be. We are simply vibrating particles of matter that are not in fact particles at all, but fields within fields within fields. And so we're producing or where we are able to connect into the field of that greater consciousness, if you like, that that inherent interconnect interconnectedness of all life, which produces a divine matrix or a quantum field that allows us to have this kind of information superhighway. So let me say that another way. We are electromagnetic beings who are producing fields at the subatomic level. We're, we're not actually physical particles. We are fields within fields within fields. And so we are able to access, because we're not time and space specific, we're actually open to the, the kind of infinite vastness of the, of the cosmos because we are made up of that same pure energy, pure consciousness state in our true form. So we need to stop thinking about ourselves as solid and fixed and start recognizing that we are able to commune or connect to that inherent interconnectedness, that one mind at all times. We simply have not been taught how to do it because we have not been taught our true nature, which is pure energy, pure consciousness that is masquerading as physical form through our dominant five senses it looks like we are physical but the truth is that we are so much more than that and we're actually so much less than that we are not physical at all so when we start thinking in terms of being pure energy or pure consciousness we begin to understand how intuition can work that field that inherently interconnected field is what allows intuition to function so at that quantum level, everything that ever was and ever will be exists at once and access to it is like a you know a divine superhighway or an information superhighway that isn't happening through uh, causality. It's not happening through the Newtonian laws of how the universe functions. It's happening through connecting to that quantum dimension of what we are. So when we talk about non-locality and a-causality, we're talking about being able to receive information outside of the bounds of cause and effect. We don't have to travel to a place and time in order to get that information and come back to where we were and then pass that information on. So this is why non-local intuition works, because of that inherent interconnectedness at the quantum level, which is what we truly are. So where does fear come into this? Why would fear interrupt or disrupt our connection to that inherent interconnectedness, that one mind? Well, very simply, it's because fear restricts. So if we're thinking about ourselves as energy beings who are communing with that infinite inherent interconnectedness all of the time, what is going to cause us to feel disconnected is when our electromagnetic field contracts uh, versus when we're in a relaxed, open, safe and loving state and then we expand and that expansion naturally increases our connection to that, that field and therefore we're able to commune much more readily with, the, with that field that's always there, it doesn't come and go and none of us have privileged or special access to it, we all have access to it. But if you think about it as tuning into a frequency, like tuning into a radio station, if you are at the wrong frequency, all you're going to hear is static. You're not going to be able to have an easeful and graceful connection to the information that is trying to download all of the time. What I love about this form of intuition is that it's beyond asking questions. So non-locality, non-local intuition isn't about turning up to oracle cards or trinkets or pendulums and, and saying, okay, what's the next best step for my life? We're actually learning how to train our vibration so that we can hold ourselves at a state of being or vibration that is akin to that one mind. So we're in the same frequency, the same radio frequency, and therefore we are in a flow state. And that information is just being generously poured into us in a consistent, ongoing way. And we never have to pause to sort of say, what, what is my next step? We will very quickly know through that sense of suddenly everything goes to static if we've moved out of the vibration that allows that, that communion to happen. And we're no longer picking up the signal, if you like, and we simply need to adjust. So fear is the disruptor. Fear is what contracts us, makes us uh, un, un, we're no longer vibing with the signal of the infinite and we can no longer pick up that signal with ease and grace. The signal hasn't gone anywhere, the field hasn't gone anywhere, our connection to that field hasn't gone anywhere. We've just moved into a state of being, a vibration that is contrary or contradictory to being able to effectively and easily tune into that non-local information. 
So what's the antidote to that? Well, the antidote is to meet your fear. There's no way around this. We cannot uh, put a happy band-aid on it. We can't just go, okay, well, I'll just think positive thoughts and then I'll expand into the field again. What we need to do is be willing to look at fear as what it truly is. So not only are we needing to change the conversation about intuition, we need to change our minds about what fear is and how it functions. If you think about those times where the, the, the frequency goes out of signal and it suddenly becomes static as fear, that is showing us that we need to get back into the right frequency. So it's very exciting for us to be able to see fear then as a, as a beautiful kind of um, tap on the shoulder to say, hey, for whatever reason, you've moved out of your natural, connected, high vibing state and we need to look at what's going on here. Now, the nature of the fear that I'm talking about is not the fear that you're aware of. It's not the things that you know are the things you're scared of. What we want to work with is the subconscious fear program. Because the subconscious is actually where we store, if you like, all of the, the 90 to 95 percent of our consciousness. And it's the invisible programs that are running our life based on our history. So based on our experiences up to this point, our job then is to be willing to look at the inherited and borrowed and genetic and ancestral and, you know, it, you know, perceptions of self that are fear based from all of the places we've inputted data. And that includes just from looking at the world that we exist in, which is geared towards that fear. So our job very much is when fear rises, not to try to avoid it, not to try and kind of eat our way out of it or pick a fight or look the other way, but, but to sit with that fear and to ask it with curiosity, how are you here to serve me? What information do you contain for me? We can only do that by going into those deeper states of consciousness that allow us to get out of the incoherent beta brainwave state. So we really need to spend time in practices like meditation and prayer, visualization, and move out of our very, very busy, busy doing, doing state and to create stillness, silence, and solitude. This is where we most easily and readily access our intuition. So if you don't have periods of, of those three things every day, there's a good chance that hearing or experiencing your intuition is going to feel um, very challenging. So you can say to me, oh, Ricky, I don't understand my intuition, or I don't hear it, or I'm not really connected or I don't have that gift, one of the biggest bullshit ideas about intuition is that it is a gift that some people have and others don't and it's simply not true. So what we want to do is to start normalizing the behaviors that will allow intuition to flourish and what we mean really is to allow our vibration to go to a higher set point every day by creating the conditions that will allow that to happen. So that silence, stillness and solitude making space and time to curiously investigate your fear and to be willing to really explore that with an open heartedness. So changing our perception of fear, seeing it as a friendly ally that's saying, hey, you could be tuned in at a higher level of vibration right now and therefore you would have more access to that one mind, that infinite inherent interconnectedness. And if you live in that state of being, then you will not go into fear so frequently. So you see, it's a very clear formula. So it's impossible for you to say to me, Ricky, I can't hear my intuition. It's not working for me. I'm just not naturally intuitive or I don't know what to do right now. I don't know how to answer this difficult life situation that's presenting itself to me. And if I say to you then, well, are you doing the work of silent stillness and solitude? Are you sitting with your discomfort? Are you investigating your fear by moving into devotional states like meditation and prayer? Or are you running around like a headless chicken trying to make things happen in that high beta brainwave state which is messy and it's incoherent and it's hard to hear that, that deep sense of connectedness when we are in that beta brainwave state. So the work that we need to do, the precursor to a really high vibing, very effortless intuition is to cultivate a devotion that inquires or requires discipline and commitment. So intuition is not going to be increased without that decision to place devotion at the center of your life. And you know, Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet was asked once, if someone wants to increase their intuition or their psychic ability, what do they do? And really his answer was to pursue God. Because if you want to increase your intuition, you've got to recognize that it is it is really what you're saying is, I want to get closer to God. I want to feel that connection to God more fully. And if God's not a word you feel comfortable with, then I invite you to replace it with infinite, unlimited consciousness or source or spirit. But to pursue an increasing intuition without wanting to get closer to God, to me, is, is a paradox. Because... 
intuition is the language of the infinite of God consciousness it is the bridge between us and that infinite state of being which is our true nature so to want to be more intuitive without wanting to increase your spirituality without wanting to increase your sense of connection to that 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 state of devotion would be to me um, reckless and, and dangerous because then you're just trying to go for the trinkets and superstitions. You're just trying to get the party tricks without actually wanting to increase your sense of, of unity with all that there is. And that unity consciousness is the end point of intuition. I've spoken not too infrequently about the idea that that really the end point of intuition is that we no longer talk about intuition because intuition will become redundant intuition is a language that helps us bridge where we are now or where we perceive ourselves to be and our unlimited state which is our God state and eventually when we become one with that God state why would we need a language we are it we have remembered who we are so why would we need a language to take us back into that um, state because we're already embodying it. We are it. We're no longer thinking in separation, which is a Newtonian way of conceiving reality. And we've merged back with the truth of what we are, which is unlimited. So that is a lot of information, but it's really the formula for an ever increasing intuitive connection. And I'm so excited to share that with you today because I've put all of that into a program. And that is called the Initiate Program, How to Get Fearless, Fierce and Freakishly Intuitive. And that program